Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome back to Empire Total War. Well, last time, we made our preparations for the final push. Because if Britain won't sell us New York, we're going to have to take down Britain. And over in India, I have laid a perfect trap to trigger the Marathan Revolution, because I want that damn thing to happen. Ah yes, though one small warm-up that needs to be done, Poland. You don't get access to the sea anymore because you can't be trusted with it. You see, what I like about City Seeds is just getting right down on the ground and enjoying the carnage. It's just... Oh, it's lovely. Funniest thing, just before I arrived, everybody caught fire and exploded. Although I'm going to be honest, that entire business, that was really just a roadblock. I don't even want this city. What I want is uh, the Polish Navy to go away forever. So let's just uh, force that out onto the sea and uh, oh guys. Guys, 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 guys. The wind's behind us, the weather is fair. Oh, this is going to be a lovely, lovely day right here. All ships move in this direction, please. And rocket ships, oh. Today I have got a bigger target for you. It is going to be beautiful. And here we go. The rocket ship moves into range and begins opening fire on a six rate. And a six rate, it's got a much better chance of hitting something. And already, yes, our big ships are also moving in. So the rocket ships, there's no reason to move them too much further forward. Just tell them to park right there. No trouble whatsoever. You just start turning in this direction. You can do the same. Meanwhile, my big ships can just uh, keep on moving up and absolutely destroying anybody they get in range of. But the rocket ships, no reason for them to be any nearer than they are already. So now I've just got my own big ships coming in, laying down the fire. Absolutely lovely. That was good. That was a good hit right there. And they're on fire. They might just explode. In fact, look at that. My big ships haven't even arrived yet. And already, I have got two of their ships wavering and two of them on fire. I think you're... No, you're still a bit on fire. You're a bit on fire right there, which is absolutely lovely. And my other ships are just coming in to cause trouble. You've surrendered. This ship has just surrendered immediately. It was only the sloop, fine, but still. Also, maybe move you away a bit. Don't get too close to a ship that's like, you know, on fire. There can be problems as a result of that. Like, say, you being on fire soon afterwards. There we go. Beautiful, easy, all done. That's the thing about the rocket ships. They're not gonna win you fights by themselves, but as a support vessel at the rear, as a floating artillery, they are magnificent. Okay, I am now willing to make peace with Poland uh, and I'm even willing to pay for it a bit. After all, I have made a bit of money off the sea police. But, 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 I'm gonna be honest. I don't want them to have this anymore. And I don't want to have it either, because it gives me all sorts of borders I don't really want. It's going to be difficult to defend. And I don't want Westphalia to have it, because I don't really want them in the Baltic when we might be about to go to war with Britain, and thus them by association. So... Okay, I've got a plan. My good friends Punjab, how would you feel about having a handful of European colonies? All right, we can ship you all sorts of exciting, sexy European goods. There we go. Say hello to new Punjab. Magnificent. And there we go. Poland takes the peace at this point, having been battered a fair bit. So I am going to pay them some reparations, but honestly, no more than what I've actually got out of sinking their fleet, selling it to the sea police. So we are golden. Okay, I'll admit, here's one I um wasn't expecting. The Inuit nations uh, have attacked me. I mean, I guess they want some of the territory I took in North America back? I don't know. Okay, here we go. The trap is set. I have uh, completely demolished everything inside this city. And, uh, oh, clamour for reform, even with the Republican benefit, is actually pretty damn a high right now. And on top of that, yes, don't forget, that's with a small garrison present. I'm about to pull that garrison straight back out. So, oh my. Oh, flipping my. Guys, good news. Out of the goodness of my heart, 
I've decided you can have your capital back. Alright, I'm just lovely like that. So, alright. Get the garrison. Pull it back to Goa. And this place is just... Just holding together, actually. And... Okay, taxation doesn't even make a difference one way or another. Fascinating. But all right, we're uh, we're giving this away at this point. Though we're keeping the missionary here, obviously. Guys, good news. I'm just feeling in a really, really good mood today. So you can have that back. And straight away, you can tell from, yeah, that symbol there, they have moved the center of the empire straight back over here. And right now, this is on... Minus 1 and minus 12. Okay. And that's with tax exemption. Oh. Oh, they have fallen straight into my trap. This is, this is beautiful. So, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Clamour for reform. 16 people in government. 1. Industrialization. 1. Religious unrest up to 3. Government type 2. Lovely absolutely bloody lovely. And all of this is with zero war weariness. Because, yeah, it gets reset if the capital moves. Because you can't do that by choice. Or at least if you can, I don't know how you do it. But the AI just does it automatically. Like, if it gets its original center back. Which is what's happened here. So, okay. Time to generate some war weariness, I'd say. Step one. Begin the assault on what used to be their center until, like... Five minutes ago. Oh yeah, nothing here but garrisons and a handful of uh, damaged troops, leftovers from uh, the last fight in this region. And, of course, they did have to take out the rebels recently. So, uh, oh yeah, these guys are in no fit state to fight. Right, auto-resolve at that one. No trouble whatsoever. We move straight in. Lovely. Do I even want this territory? Not desperately also can i no i can't quite get down to uh the water unfortunately though hang on maratha aren't at war with punjab so if i gave the territory to punjab would that force the boat out onto the water so that i could fight them i don't know also punjab's got a navy oh this is lovely this reminds me of the early days of westphalia this is just absolutely lovely i'm enjoying this hugely Okay, I'm good to be honest, this territory is kind of terrible, so I don't really need it for anything. I may as well just, Jack, yeah, give it to my old friend's Punjab. Although I'll tell you what, I'm going to be nice and repair it first. They can have it next turn. Especially as that will give Punjab access to, oh, a full dockyard. Okay, Punjab are having a proper navy, given they're my best friends. That there, that's not bad at all. Oh yeah, the bastards love me. Also, I have, um, plus 18 due to historical friendship, which is interesting given they didn't exist before about five years ago, but sure, why not? Ah yes, and there's the Inuit nations that have attacked me. I mean, I guess they've done it because, like, my island is fairly unguarded, so... Alright, just in case, we'll put up some defense, sure. Useful fact, the biggest British Navy in the world right now is located in Gibraltar. And it appears to be damaged and has been for some time, I believe. So, okay, Britain may be a bit struggling on the old money front and it's going to take them some time to get that thing fixed up and back to the channel. The actual fleets around here are relatively, yeah, pretty bloody modest. So seizing control of uh, British shipping and taking out, uh, yes, the local fleets, that's not going to be so difficult. But for the time being, yeah, pick up this army and make sure it's pretty well repaired up before we go. We want to make sure everything is uh, as it should be, though. Okay, just out of interest, send, uh, yeah, send our fleet more over in this direction. I'd like to have uh, eyes on London before we make a final decision about our attack plan, which is, uh, okay, pretty standard army, vast majority of it, terrible garrison troops, nothing to worry about there, no. But okay, count up the armies here, because this is looking fine. We've got a full stack army right here. This is the army that's just finished its tour of Russia, and uh, that wasn't just, you know, for fun, it was also to gain experience. This army is now very very tough. 
and the general is extremely experienced. So, yeah, doing a bit of a tour around another nation, just blowing up all their stuff, it leaves you with a good army of veterans. By comparison, the large force in Berlin has generally been a defensive force, so it has nowhere near as much experience. Like going toe-to-toe -to -toe with fresh rookies, they're barely any better than that. So, yeah, that was the advantage of doing it my way. Oh, that does remind me, by the way. Yes, the fleet I stole off Poland. That's now my treasure fleet. I can just head over here and uh, there we go. Extra 900 trade goods. Not bad. Not bad at all. The economy's still looking... Oh, blimey. Right, I'm gonna be honest. The economy has taken a bit of a knock. I have been building troops very aggressively. So, at this point... Oh, if I lose my trade... Oh, that's an issue, in fact. Okay, you know what? Anybody up for maybe a bit of a tax rise? Because... Alright, Flanders is always being a bit on the fussy side. I think they're just... Very Catholic and thus don't like me very much. Everybody else, yeah, over in this direction. That's looking pretty good. All right, and... Okay, we can get away with very high taxes in America, actually. But only on the middle class. So, all right. Just whack up taxes on America. There's no way that can go wrong for a great European power. But this here, this is what we did all the investment for. All right, we are swimming in trade and tax money to afford these armies. So when it comes to it, when we're ready for the big stupid showdown against Britain, we can afford it. Way more than they can. But what I'm honestly way, way more interested in is, oh yeah, just keeping an eye on this bloody nonsense. Because I don't know, given it wasn't their centre for a while, whether this can spawn a proper full revolution. In a few turns, I guess we'll find out. Oh, here come the Inuit nations, by the way. Though, I'm not sure they can actually, like, get to me, because... Do they even have, like, a port? Oh, and extraordinarily exciting news over here. So, Westphalia has gone and taken Portugal, too. They now control Spain and Portugal and France and large parts of modern-day Germany, just because, okay, I may have, um... May have suddenly created a monster here. These guys could actually be a problem. And yes, as I would have expected, they are desperately throwing up our happiness buildings in their new center. But it's not going to make a difference. They cannot possibly resist a revolution this time. Just a few turns, it's going to flipping happen. All right, they cannot stop this. We're going to make double sure of that by destroying the Maratha Navy. All right, force it out to sea, sink the bastards. Now I will give them, this boat is in better shape than mine is, but I have many, many more boats. And on top of that, I've got Briggs who can just start laying down the fire on the sails, for example. So yeah, we'll just take out the guns, knackering all of that with these guys. And meanwhile, the Briggs, they can just focus on taking out the sails. Lovely, lovely, lovely. They're not going to be enjoying that. You guys should definitely be um turning around, coming back by the way. Oh yeah, Sail's already in a lot of trouble. You guys turn around, you guys turn around. And in just a moment, after just a handful more hits. Oh yeah, they're already in a lot of trouble. They're not going anywhere. Do not let them escape. I want these guys sunk or captured. I don't really care which. Just make sure they... No, no, no. Make sure they don't get away. And they shouldn't be able to. This is why I brought the bricks. Just to make it absolutely sure they couldn't. In fact, we're going to literally box them in. Guys, you are not going anywhere. Give it up. All right, I'll be having that, thank you. And down you go. Lovely. Oh, that reminds me, by the way. Yes, this expeditionary force, who are going to go and take back Persia. And when I say take back, I mean, like, very literally. We're going to make Persia come back. So, they don't like me very much, etc., etc., etc. Not too surprising, but honestly, kind of what I want. So, all we need to do is make sure that, yes, they can't take this place back in the next handful of turns. And honestly, I do not see it happening. So, all right, may as well just uh, get this place fixed up a bit. So, when its former owners return from the dead, that won't cause them any uh, trouble. And I will simply march my army northwards. Lovely. So, this place is very unhappy and will absolutely rebel. Brilliant. That'll be Persia back. 
And with that all taken care of and neatly round here, yes, you guys may now evacuate. No trouble whatsoever. You guys just, uh, yeah, head down south in this direction. Don't forget to take the cavalry with you and hand it straight over to my best friends in the whole wide world. Oh yeah, just in case the situation wasn't bad enough, War weariness is back. At this point, yes, the various social classes are going to have to queue to have a revolution. Because they both want to have one at the same time. So, I assume whoever has the lowest public order gets to go first, right? Okay, here's a fun change, by the way. So, the territory up here that used to belong to Russia that I gave to the Ottomans uh, is now Swedish. But Sweden are not at war with the Ottomans. Instead, Sweden are actually allied with the Ottomans, so... Okay, possibly that's an example of, uh, yeah, the AI buying and selling territory. Which they don't do very often, but I can't see how else that happened on this occasion. Okay, New York Army in position, ready to go. Though this navy may not survive long. Two full stack armies and two uh, very large fleets in Europe, ready to go. And in India, we now just need to let, uh, yes, time do its terrible... Terrible dance. Oh, um, so it turns out that the Inuits can just cross. There's, um, there's a ford there, I think. Or they're just really good at swimming, so... Okay, they, um, they might be about to take that bit of territory. Honestly, if they do, it was a staging post. It has staged the army. The army's now going to get the real target. I mean, we'll see what happens. Maybe I could just pay them off, it's fine. Oh, and spectacular timing... We've got a spy ready to go. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. This is it. This is the moment we've been waiting for. The Netherlands versus Britain. Let's go. The downside is, yes, they do have both ports occupied, so we can't just get our troops unloaded immediately. They will know we're coming. But there's only so much they're going to be able to build in one go. Especially as, oh yeah, 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 yeah. We're bringing the good stuff today. And uh, the brand new cannons. I know these are just howitzers, but these guys, uh, they're a lot better. This is going to destroy my relationship with Britain forever, by the way. Because when I do this, military alliance goes in the bin. Trade agreement goes in the bin. So uh, even though I can rebuild those, it's going to take so long to do. Effectively, me and Britain will hate each other for the next century. So... Uh, I'm so sorry, guys. You should have just sold me New York. All right, lads. We are going the flip in. Trade agreement cancelled with... Uh, oh, I'm pretty sure Westphalia just decided... Uh, yeah, we're at war with Westphalia. But I'm pretty sure that one we can get rid of. There is uh, no benefit to me having to fight across my entire bloody frontier. So Westphalia... Sure, they decided to honourably join Britain, but they will just as dishonourably abandon Britain right now. But yeah, they're now down to minus 205. They, like, hate me as much as everybody else does, which is very upsetting, but we are where we are. I'm going to be generous, guys. Two grand, five turns, restore trade, peace. Done. Okay, we don't need to kill Westphalia. All right, so Westphalia have basically joined the war and then immediately said, actually, you know what? That did seem a bit dicey. Let's not worry about that after all. So, all right. All right, all right, all right. Let's get... Do we even need... Yeah, let's get the good ships in position right here. So, all right. Guys, 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 guys. Get you out of there. We don't need you there, though. You go and guard, uh, yes, this port instead. Get the good army. This is now my number one army in the world. This army is uh, ridiculous. I mean, I suppose I could uh, swap out some of these troops for experienced iterations, but regardless, this is uh, this is pretty amazing. You get on there, job done, and boats, you start moving, obviously. And yeah, as I say, unfortunately, we can't actually begin the invasion immediately. The game just will not allow that to happen. Now... I mean, you're saying I can't go this way. Are you sure I can't? Hang on. I thought I could just go through the interception zone, but... Alright, fine. Doesn't really matter. One way or another, to be honest, we'll just, uh, yeah, drop the guys off here. 
in East Anglia and we'll march on London in the morning. And this is, yeah, where things get important that we do it right. So get over to here as well. Make sure they choose to not take the interception. Okay. Army number two. I feel like we should dump this army right here. We should have a one good army guarding this area. All right. We should not be leaving the Netherlands unguarded. You guys go over here to Flanders just to keep an eye on this. You guys stay here for now. This navy just pops out here and stays here and waits and may as well just, uh, yeah, ransack some British trade while it's doing it. But now, if Britain wants to come and attack our ports, they're going to have to come by our fleets to do it. And if they want to try and land troops here in Westphalia, who they're still allied with, and march on Flanders, well, there is at least some decent defence to stand in their way. Okay, let's just merge some troops together, get reinforcements down to Flanders, just in case that frees up some space here so we can get, yes, more Holland Guard in training, more Swiss infantry in training. May as well have everyone as needs to. I forgot the spy... John, you were supposed to send the spy to the UK to keep an eye on them, but then you forgot about him. Bloody hell, it was only like two minutes ago that came up. Okay, it's all going to be fine. The centre of my empire is defended by land and by sea. All right, the invasion of Britain has begun. The invasion of America, that is momentarily because, yes, this port is not blocked up. That means we can go straight in. There we go. Troops now present and correct. We should be able to make it straight to Albany straight away. So apparently Albany is the center, not New York. New York's just the port and uh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's manageable. Okay, here we are at long last in North America. And uh, I didn't realize this till just now. Albany doesn't have any defenses, so okay. We're going to be taking the last city we need for our victory condition right here with some good old traditional town fighting. Oh, this is, uh, this is going to be good. All right, let's line them up because uh, I've brought some uh, very fun toys to play with. Admittedly, this is, yes, a bit of an unusual army just because uh, no grenadiers, not much in the way of uh, cavalry. Way more snipers than I ought to have brought to not much front line, but then again... The starting zone is pretty narrow. They've got to start there, I've got to start here. So uh, the fight's going to start off nice and narrow. To be honest, it's going to be the artillery that wins it. That's how this game goes. At the start of the game, melee troops still have a role to play because without technology, the gun lines are somewhat limited. By the mid-game, gun lines win everything. But then you get to the late game and all of a sudden, it's the artillery. The entire army just exists to protect the artillery because that's what's going to ultimately win it. The gun lines just push them over the edge and cause the break. But the artillery, they're the real killers. So, all right. I've brought the rockets. I've brought the puckle guns. Let's go puckle some Americans. And are we in range straight away? The rockets are because the rockets, they have ludicrous, ludicrous mega range. Obviously, these guys are defending, so they do have something in the way of, uh, yeah, defense and whatnot. But they're not going to be using too much of it. I'd say one of you ought to be targeting, yeah, the horses at the back over here. One of you can just target, yeah, the infantry. Now, rockets, as we've said before, are kind of, um, yes inconsistent. Are they going to hit anything? Who bloody knows? So they're definitely going to hit literally nothing. Alright, but they'll hit something eventually. Alright, it just feels appropriate that what we've done is we've come here to America and we're going to murder them with a very literal rocket's red glare. Looks like the army's moving round to this side. They potentially want to get a flank off, so okay, I'm going to deepen the flank over on this front, just for safety. Let's just get ourselves, yes, a bit more of a, this sort of a business. In comes Rocket Wave number two, and... Okay, we definitely killed some horses. Oh, but this is better. This is lovely. So we are now coming into range of my beautiful, beautiful howitzers. Now, howitzers the other side are not in as good position, to be honest. I might just actually, uh, yeah... 
just uh, limber them up, then we move them over to the other side. Just for some reason, the British Army is determined to approach this particular flank. So, uh, alright, they want to do that. Let's make sure my guns are in position to deal with it. Already we're doing a lot of good damage right here. Wearing them down a bit. Though, honestly, this is... This is starting to look weird. I'm going to move at two more units over onto this flank to assist. Because I do not like the way this is shaping up. For some reason, Britain's just decided they want to be all over on this side. Okay, they're starting to come back towards the center at this point. Yes, we are at uh, short range. So we can start doing a little bit more damage right here. Laying down the rockets. But yeah, it's definitely the, uh, the quick line that's doing the real kills right there. Bunch of corpses starting to fall down. Yeah, they're responding to me moving my line. They're now moving towards the center. But this kind of works for me. All right, Britain are a little bit concerning just because they've got a huge, huge amount of infantry. More line infantry than I've got. So, okay, just... Oh, is that a puckle gun firing? I think it is, you know. Right, the puckle guns are starting to do something. Let's get right down onto the ground and enjoy them doing literally nothing whatsoever. Now, that was the quick line, obviously. Puckle guns. Bloody useless. They might have just got, like, two kills there. Marvellous. Well done. Okay, short-range rockets coming in and laying down some fire. That did... I mean, maybe something. I'm unsure. We've got plenty of gunfire coming in. It's just so inaccurate. Just... They shouldn't be worried. They don't need to be worried in the slightest. But we are doing good damage to some of the, uh, yes, lovely, lovely militia lads are right there. They're drawing up. As soon as they're in a big line, they'll probably start coming forward. Because they don't just want to, uh, yeah, stand here and take this all day, every day. Now, they're starting to get a little bit closer. So, the Puckle Guns might be able to start doing something. We have got rockets coming down. This is, oh, this is good drama right here. We have got fire. They are shattered. They did not like that. One little bit. More rockets going down. Britain's leaving its cavalry at the rear for some reason. Not 100% sure why, to be honest. I feel like actually I'd be in a pretty good position to start bringing up some, uh, yeah, gun cav and also snipers uh, just to start getting a little bit of good damage in right here. You guys can start doing some good work. The British line is coming in, but it's coming in step by step. It's going to struggle just because, uh, yeah, they're not pushing in altogether. I think these guys want to maybe charge on the puckle guns. And if you guys want to give your lives so that the puckle guns might stop firing, I mean, you're welcome to try, quite frankly. Snipers are about to start getting some really, really good shots in over here. If we are very lucky. Not quite, guys. Push forward a tiny, tiny amount. You're just shooting over the heads of those guys. I mean, hopefully over the heads anyway. The flank over here is getting a little bit overloaded. To be honest, I might want to start, yes, taking out these guys sooner rather than later. They're going to break in no time whatsoever. Okay, it's time. Bring you guys into position. Bring you guys into position. Bring you guys into this position over here. The British are now charging straight into the front of the line. We're seeing off the, yes, the right. That's pretty easy. The left, however, there are definitely problems. So we're just going to bring a whole bunch of troops here to support. It's going to be great. Okay, you guys ready to open fire at this point? Hopefully you are. Anytime you're ready. Lovely. And in comes the Dutch fire right into their rear. Melee versus melee is slow and difficult. Please, please open fire. Anybody who wants to can open fire. Just push the tiniest, tiniest bit forward. Oh, I think there's a hell in the way. Gosh darn terrain. Right, okay. I think we're fine. You guys are now forward. Okay. Pretty sure we just seen them off there. Their little flanking move did not pay off. Uh, infantry is coming back in. There is still a lot of cavalry at the rear. They've also got like one cannon at the rear too. Just going to lay down rockets on that if we're lucky. But yeah, that was basically decided by technology. My front line did not need to do much at this point of the game. It's just a tech war. Last handful of infantry are trying to come in at this point. But to be honest, guys, 
you're running straight into sniper territory. Quicklime's gonna be shooting up the side of you momentarily. My snipers are about to do beautiful, beautiful work right there. Absolutely spectacular. Oh, I love it. And off they go. Right. Infantry is taken care of. Time to start deploying the cavalry to the flanks. Though, to be honest, that's... That is a lot. And I do mean a flipping lot of... Yeah. Uh, cavalry. The best option is probably, actually, to send my own infantry forward. Just to uh, counteract that. So, uh, alright lads. Uh, begin pushing forwards, please. Oops. Beat the devil. They're running in... Doing the odd little pot shot at me. Honestly, we can take care of that. Not too much difficulty here. Just bring forward the snipers. You guys get into position to take these guys out. If you can get a good shot on Guncav, they collapse. Guncav have got to get in, get their shot, then disappear. My snipers are about to open fire. And they are going to collapse. Blast cannons. Nothing they can do. Good a little rocket explosion coming in as well. Pretty sure we're now ready to, yeah, push on at the rear. Yep, they got nothing left but the cannons at the rear. And as soon as they go down, cavalry just moving in on uh, both sides. Uh, right now, I think actually their cannons are in. Oh, that was a bad position. Their cannons have just been firing into this hillside the entire time. Dear oh flippin' dear. And I believe that should be the end of it. The rockets just are screaming overhead. Absolutely flipping love it. Who's left, lads? Because I'm pretty sure... Oh, hang on. There's a unit back over there. Does anyone know who, like, he is? Okay, whoever he was, he's gone now. You know what? I'm going to give you. The Puckle Guns did get 116 kills. That is better than I was expecting. The rocket troops, meanwhile, um, yeah... They don't necessarily hit anything, like, ever. But they're fun, damn it. And with that, we have completed our campaign objectives at Spec Flipping Tacular. But, 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 but. I'd say there's a tiny, tiny bit of mopping up we need to do first. Because I suspect the British aren't just going to, uh, yeah, stand there and let this stand. Let's just get some uh, walls up, repair the central building, etc, etc. You guys are still using dirt roads. Well, this is just embarrassing. Yes, I suspect the forces of, um, Boston and Philadelphia are not going to take this one at lying down. So, I'd say we probably need to make sure that Britain can never threaten us again. Also, you guys really need to just naff off. There we go. I tossed some technology at them, so they left me alone. How about we just train some extra troops here, just in case this happens again? Though possibly the biggest question now is, yes. What's Britain going to do with its forces in Gibraltar? Because they could use this navy to cause me a lot of trouble on my trade network. Or they could just barrel home in an attempt to, yes, seize control of the channel. We'll have to bloody see, because... Uh, okay, how's the economy? A bit worrying, actually. Britain can't do that much... Oh, I mean, I couldn't do that much damage, because I don't have that much trade uh, to leech off, but... Yeah, I've got 31,000 trade going along this spine right now. Britain could actually cause me a lot of trouble now I think about it. Okay, no immediate sign of movement around Gibraltar by the looks of it. No one's attacked my navies, no one's attacked my armies. Britain might just be panicking for the moment. And if we're lucky, Spain might just be getting in the way of Britain. So they can't send their forces back home. That'd be marvellous. Just loving Punjab Prussia. That's great, by the way. Okay, it's also not just Britain we need to worry about when it comes to uh, New York. The neighbours on the other side have also decided they do not like me. Oh, and bless Punjab, they've already built, yes, a navy in the Baltic. I don't know what it is or where it's going, but Godspeed, you magnificent bastards. Oh, and Britain's taken Texas as well. So Spain might be about to lose literally everything in North America, and indeed, America overall, they've got nothing left at this point. You lads might be about to come in, but I feel like, yes, against my volume of artillery, you're not going to be able to do too much, really. 
and strangely, no movement at all from, yeah, Philadelphia or from Boston. Fascinating. All right, step one, however, is pretty easy, and uh, oh my, this is uh, very much what I've been waiting for. It's time to bring the Holland Guard, the Blue Guard, uh, and the brand new 24-pound cannons uh, straight to bear on London. Oh, and la dee da London in the distance somewhere over there, but for today, we need to take out this beautiful, massive star fort, and uh, I have got just the tools to do it. The fun thing about the Star Fort, by the way, is because it's bigger, its walls are actually nearer to my starting position than a smaller fort is. So normally, at the start of the fight, I need to move my howitzers forward because their range is only 350. But when you've got a Star Fort, I can be in range straight away. It's, it's just lovely. Say hello to the new lads, by the way, the uh, Holland Guard right here. Magnificent, just beautiful gold detail on the jacket, and the blue guard, who are, to be honest, a bit on the plain side, uh, they're just wearing, you know, blue, which everyone wears. Like, if you had to guess, you'd say the guys on the left were the better troops, right? No, it's the plain lads on the right. These guys, we want to get them into a melee, because they are incredible in melee. But step one is testing out our brand new cannon. So everybody just uh, open fire. These new cannons a lot. Lots more powerful than what we had before. So uh, this here wall is not going to stand up to much at all. No, no, it is not. So, okay, you don't get to fire stuff at me, actually, buddy. Oh, here comes what may be the last shot. So, guys, I'm going to be honest. You are, um, you're not standing in a good position, given what's about to... You jammy get. Okay, wasn't good news for these guys over here, though. So, okay, we got ourselves a breach, meaning they will almost certainly abandon this bit of the wall immediately. All right, time to split the army up a little bit. Two cannons on one side, creating a second breach on the left. That'll be done in no time. My elite infantry is ready to move in on that front when the moment is right. Lovely. Some basic infantry over on the right, just basically starting to, yeah, pepper the enemy. These guys are back over to Quicklime. They're just firing right into here or up the staircase right here. Either is just fine. To be honest, anybody steps outside, they immediately get a little bit on the shot side. You guys just move in a little bit tighter. And one group right in the middle over here. Because, yes, the edge of the Star Fort is currently not guarded. So let's get some ropes up. Let's get some troops over here. Let's start taking out any troops up on the walls because yeah we can just fire across breach take this position use it to distract them distract the enemy divide their attention that's a good way of making sure they don't end up blocking up the breach with a giant pile of troops and yeah occasionally there might be some troops who decide to step outside to challenge us when they do these units will just lay down a catastrophic amount of fire on them they are not going to have a, a good day. Plus, on top of that, yes, I'm laying down uh, artillery right behind them. So, that's going to annoy them too. These guys will just keep firing over and over and over again. Just a fire coming in from uh, four units on one. I mean, well done for being eager right now. That is... That is ballsy. The fact that you are eager at this exact moment in time while men around you just die due to bullets and quick life. Well done, you red-coated bastards. I mean, they're sneaking units out this way, but it's just not going to work in the long run. These guys are just being torn to flipping shreds by artillery, gunfire. Meanwhile, over on this side, has that breach just gone down? It has, you know... And that's really bad news for you guys because, one, that means you guys can go over to Quicklime, start firing up onto the walls, whatever. Yeah, units on the walls like this, obviously a big cone down that can do devastating damage. Absolutely flipping lovely. How are my units who are trying to clamber up? Oh, they're doing a good job. And Guys, I wouldn't recommend it, to be honest. And Okay, we've also got Quicklime up the bridge, which is fine, I suppose. And I suppose, yes, one-on-one, -on -one, you guys, the line infantry, you will do extraordinarily well against Firelock infantry. It's not 
really where I wanted you to be, to be honest. But sure, you do you, I guess. Oh yeah, the pushover on the right is collapsing already. Over on the left, we can just start bringing our troops into an excellent position right here. They might come under a tiny, tiny amount of fire off these guys. This is probably, yeah, one of the strongest units they've actually got going at the moment. Are you guys ready to... Guys, what did I just say about firing over here? Fire on these bastards. Also, love this formation, by the way. This is, um... This is beautiful. Sometimes in Empire, units end up in very odd formations, it must be said. Oh, and here they come. My elite units, I'm getting into the fight for the very first time. There is a base unit of line infantry emerging on the left. And these guys are finally getting their chance. And, uh, oh guys, this ain't gonna go well for you. These guys aren't being artillery right now. This is just extremely accurate gunfire. Tearing them to shreds. Accuracy is just, yeah, such an important stat in this game. It makes a ridiculous difference in terms of how many men you're killing with each volley. It is ridiculous. Alright, I'd say we're now at a stage where we can just straight up push in. You guys are wavering. You guys can start moving over to here. You guys just, uh, yeah, finish off this lot. There's only 19 left. These troops on this side, time to start pushing up. All right, create yourselves a nice little position right here. So I'd like one of you right over here. And like another one of you right over here. I would like you to take this house. And I would like you to be ready to back up or move onto the wall where you need to. Spectacular. We'll have snipers up on the walls in this position. You guys do the same, please. So I'd like, uh, yeah, two units right over here. One unit right over to here. Spectacular. You get in this house and the blue guard, you're in reserve. All right, because you might need to go up to here and annihilate these line infantry up on the walls. Everybody should be running if you're not already running, by the way. Everybody, you know, treat this with some level of urgency because we are invading Britain right now. So, uh, you guys over here, you just focus on, yeah, those guys up there, you're already doing precisely that. You guys, uh, you've got nothing in range right now, but like, you know, good luck, basically. I'm sure it'll work out for you. Oh, there's some units up here. You guys try and take care of that if you can, and oh, blimey. Okay, you guys uh, get over to here. Not sure where you guys came from, to be honest. You guys move forward a bit, deal with the, uh, the cavalry actually and somebody's probably gonna try and get into the yes we're in the house already these guys have managed to get in the house so they're just going to be shooting down from the windows into these guys etc etc you guys should definitely be there you go now you're firing lovely we're firing some beautiful quick lime into these bastards you guys need to be ready to deal with this at this point yes this is going to get messy but messy in the way i want it to get messy which is yes there's going to be actually you know what Right now, they're just coming down the stairs. We may as well just uh, shoot them uh, for the time being. You guys get over to uh, here. Apparently, we've taken a giant pile of buildings. Uh, this position is uh, fine. You guys could get into uh, this building. Uh, to be honest, this guy doesn't seem to be uh, doing much right now. So turn around and assist with... Uh, these lads up here, they're wavering. That's the blue guard right there. The blue guard and their ridiculously accurate fire is uh, just tearing them to shreds. Every shot, people are dying. You get into the command headquarters. What's going on over here? These guys are trying to take this building back one-on-one. -on -one. That's going to be a bit tricky to do. This is going to be difficult, by the way. You guys are under a lot of fire. You guys might actually lose uh, this exchange. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring this guy round the side to... Oh, there's you guys in the way. Okay, hang on. Hang, hang, hang on. How are you guys doing? Okay, you guys should now be in a good position to help. Nobody should be in melee unless I say so. You guys get over to here and shoot down at these guys. You guys, yeah, just take out these lads. They will not be able to do too much. You're busy fighting these guys one-on-one. -on -one. You guys, I'm so sorry. You're going to take some severe losses. In fact, you're in melee. So, okay, actually, these guys might provide cover against these guys. That's going to work. So, I'm kind of just baiting at everything Britain's got left forward, which is not the worst thing in the world. Actually, you know what? I was just saying these guys aren't doing anything. 
deployed them in that direction. And to be honest, the blue guard have got all of this. So, yeah, you know what? Guys, you, they're wavering. Go up there and finish them off. I'm sending the blue guard into a better position over here. The blue guard can help with these lads in a moment. Oh, there's the sniper fire. You guys, I need you to get around the back of these guys. Start shooting them. Oh, the cavalry's coming. That's not good. Right, reform. We should have troops shooting down at these guys. My sniper's going to bother doing something at some point. Who bloody knows, eh? Right, okay. This is all absolutely fine. The British are coming in, but honestly, they can do a fair amount of damage just in terms of the charge bonus, but it's not going to be much in the grand scheme of things. You guys, get round to here. But yeah, these guys are about to be very useful. So any moment, guys, prepare. Just keep reloading if you'd be so kind. I need these guys shot in the arse. Lovely. What happened to the cav? Cavs over here being sniped from every angle. You guys, the Holland Guard, are doing an excellent job just uh, seeing off these bastards. This is going to be a nightmare for you. Send forward the Blue Guard. They can do a lot of damage. This unit has uh, finally broken. To be honest, that's very reasonable. You were under a lot of fire. Are you guys firing yet? Guys, would you mind uh, moving forward a bit and dealing with, uh, yes, this British force straight in front of you? In fact, you know what? They've just turned, haven't they? Which means, uh, you guys, I want you to lay down the fire right here. Their general is now dead. I'm pretty sure the blue guard just shot him to ribbons. That was probably him on horseback right there. Good job, guys. You guys should be firing about now. If you're not, please move into a position where you can. We should have snipers shooting out the windows as well. You guys are just desperately trying to deal with this nonsense. You've actually broken as well. To be honest, reasonable. I gave you a lot of bad, difficult stuff to do. So on the right, things not going so well. But my elite troops on the left are slaughtering absolutely everybody. Who's left at the back here? There's one cannon, but the cannon are being torn to shreds, so that's honestly not too much of a problem. Get over here, finish them off. That's not an issue in the slightest. You guys, get over here and just guard this position. Blue guard, it's time for you to get in and show why you are one of the best units in the damn game. In fact, you know what? I'm going to be honest, Blue Guard. We did say you guys were the uh, elite melee. So we're going to get one shot off. And then after that, it's time for you to show what I'm talking about here. So uh, just get into position momentarily. These guys now only have uh, two ranks. So the amount of fire is going to be... Actually, that means they just fire faster. That's actually optimal if you think about it. So it means they get more fire off faster. But they are stuck reloading. So my troops, anytime you're ready. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, I'd forgotten. You're platoon firing bastards, aren't you? Well, yes, the uh, fire is just Mexican waving itself down the line. Because these are elite infantry. So that's just how they fire. And by the time these guys are done firing, yeah, these guys at the uh, side should be ready to begin firing again. So the fire never stops. And they are shattered. I love it. We have got British troops broken, shattered, brilliant. Counting down at this point. What's left? As it turns out, nothing. London is mine. Only 400 lost to 2,000 on their sides. That there. That is the power of this elite infantry. And it has picked up experience very fast. I'm guessing these guys are going to be towards the uh, the top of the kill list. Yep. Holland Guard uh, right there. Blue Guard barely even got involved. Uh, 125 kills. Uh, spectacular. And with that, London belongs to me. Which is critical. Because that gives me control over all of England uh, and all of Wales. And that, that is Britain's uh, Port Heartland. All right. We've taken that away. We've taken away pretty much all their dockyards. Deploy the cavalry. The British Navy must be destroyed. Step one, force them out of their ports. So we're just going to send uh, the Light Dragoons uh, to make that happen. You guys straight outside. And no, 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 no. You're not getting away that easy. And finally, we get to enjoy our ridiculous naval firepower in a bit of a fair fight. Because Britain, they're going to be bringing artillery platforms. Third rates, sixth rates. We can finally enjoy a proper naval fight where we've got something crunchy to explode. Oh, this is going to be good uh, right here. I've ordered my rocket ship to open fire as soon as possible. Because yes, despite their poor accuracy, rocket ships so much better than rocket troops. Because rocket ships 
they've got a bigger target. And when the enemy starts bringing along third-rate ships of the line, we're talking a really, really big target. So, all right, guys. Guys, guys, guys. Let's get this guy surrounded. Damn it. And here come the rockets. And uh, despite the low accuracy, we've got one hit in already. The ship would appear to be... Well, it's definitely somewhat on fire. I definitely saw some fire there. So, okay, we're ready to go. My ship's firing their little uh, starting bits and pieces right here. You can just stay precisely where you are and continue firing on these guys. We do have a fourth rate that's going to take this entire third rate hit. But that's fine. It's going to do some damage. We can take it. There's their bomb catch dropping in explosives. Doing some severe damage to, uh, yes, the sails, as you can see right there. But honestly... I'm fine with all of this. Guys, just keep on keeping on. We're going to get right up in their faces. All right, the rocket ships are going to do good, good work. The fourth rate is going to be beautiful right here. Some tiny, tiny knocks coming in, but... Oh, this is... This is what I want, damn it. Definitely on fire. Don't want to be too close to a ship that's on fire, by the way. That's, that could be dangerous too. So just turn a little bit round here if we can use this ship for cover and that ship's kind of oh no oh guys oh i'm so sorry right well they're they're in trouble and there comes some more rockets i might just hit my own ship there potentially i'm not 100 percent sure uh so this ship's about to shoot to my ship but honestly that's uh that's a okay these guys are in a lot of trouble they've probably decided they do not want to be here anymore the brig is coming up which is absolutely fine they are routing and on fire begin boarding please capture that ship this is what brigs are for you can probably stop uh stop firing anytime you're ready to be honest taking out the bomb catch would not be a bad choice at all either these guys are ready to come in here come the rockets rockets getting some good good hits in this ship is now on fire it's surrendered all right, the rocket ship contributes a lot. That is a big, strong ship that has just surrendered straight away. I want everyone to back away from it, by the way, because it is still, you know, on fire. How's the bomb catch? Done. That is how you use the rocket ships. One rocket ship at the back. Before the fight even began, the enemy ships, their sails are damaged. They're on fire. They don't like being on fire. And with that, oh yeah. My navy is doing its job. Although, strangely, the um the third rate may have got away. We didn't capture it, but it definitely surrendered, so... Not 100% sure what happened there, to be honest. We'll just be handing you guys over to the... How on earth did you get away? We all saw that ship surrendered, right? It definitely surrendered. Okay, it's fled north to Scotland. There's a port still operational in that direction. It's a small commercial port... So, uh, yeah, there's not going to be much going on there. Ireland's only got a commercial port too. I'm pretty sure, yes, Britain now does not have the capability to locally produce big, tough ships. However, they still possess Gibraltar. And Gibraltar most certainly does possess the ability to train the big ships. You guys, by any chance... They're not fixing up their boats yet, and to be honest, with London gone, they may not be able to. Though, watch it, half the army has moved to the port. They may be trying to send reinforcements home. Though, hilariously, the Spanish may be able to stop them. And finally, make sure we burn down Cambridge, because one, yes, that is a massive penalty to public order, and two, it's Cambridge, so who cares? But you know what I would say? That is enough for now. Next time, we are wrapping up everything. The grand finale, the death of Britain, and uh, let's just say I've got a couple of other plans too. Join me next time for the end of our adventure in Empire Total War. It is going to be spectacular. Hopefully, you're looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I've been Joe. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Empire Total War. Thank you very much, and goodbye. No, this no, this no, guy's no, enjoying no. that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. Oh my god. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky. Look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear. And then oh, in come the chariots. Yeah.